Hello, today we're going to show you Firepower 7.1 um, AnyConnect VPN single sign on service with uh, Duo passwordless technology. Let's get right to it here. All right, before I show you the demo, I'm going to at least walk you through the workflow here of how the thing works. So, in my lab here, I've set up a Duo passwordless technology, meaning that I've never had to enter the password. Um, I'm using biometrics to authenticate me, so I just don't have my password. Now, there's also single sign-on service here, right? and single sign-on basically means that you authenticate once in the very beginning, and then you never have to authenticate again afterwards for the duration of the day, probably, or whatever time you configure, because authenticate once and all your ab other applications can pass right through because you auth authorized it. So in the my workflow here, I have a, a browser that's been uh, set up to uh, uh, connect to a an application that I'm protecting by Duo Cloud, and the uh, communication protocol is going to be SAML, of course. And so what that means is that user initially is going to either enter their username um, or ID, and typically it's some sort of a email address format here. So that's going to be cached in the browser as part of the the Duo passwordless setup. And then, um, so that will uh, actually get captured. And then at the same time, um, the user typically has to get authenticated, right? You have to authenticate the user once in the very beginning. And instead of using passwords, we're using Duo password less. That means I am switching over to a FIDO2 compliant technology via the browser that'll use uh, biometrics. And in this case, for my Windows machine, I can use uh, Windows Hello. Or um, if you're using a Mac OS platform, you can use the Touch ID, okay, just to uh, do fingerprinting in that case. But you never have to type in passwords because we remember who you are from the earlier registration here. All right, so the user is going to initiate a browser session um, to a SAML uh, protected application. Okay, and this application, I'll show you in a demo here. Um, so uh, user starts the session. Um, the application redirects the user browser uh, to the Duo single sign-on cloud, okay, and that's uh, SAML being used. And then um, the, the Duo single sign-on cloud acting as a identity provider in this case as well, I need to authenticate that user. So it's going to pass the user uh, name over to uh, the on-prem Active Directory domain controller. And since being on-prem and Duo single sign-on is in the cloud, it has to go through a proxy uh, service for, for protection there. And Duo offers the authentication proxy. So that means the Duo single sign-on cloud uh, passes through the Duo authentication proxy and the authentication proxy um, talks to the domain controller, Windows domain controller via LDAP. Now the domain controller responds back by saying, yeah, that user is active, it's current, it's fine. Um, responds back to the Duo single sign-on cloud. And the Duo single sign-on cloud at this point says, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and send a a authentication token response back to the user browser saying, yep, you've been authorized um, to access the application. And now the response gets sent back to the user browser, but at the same time, the uh, that application or the service provider um, is also seeing that user request or that user response token back from the, the signed, uh, from the Duo single sign on cloud that signed the token back to the browser. And um, now, Everything looks clean, and the application will grant the user access to uh, via the browser there. Okay, so that's the general high-level workflow here. Now, the next step is the interesting piece of, okay, now we have uh, a token that we've authenticated through the single sign-on cloud, so it knows who I am. Now, let's go ahead um, and say the user needs to access to an application or other applications on-prem applications, and I need to initiate the VPN service via AnyConnect. And now the user says, okay, I'm going to go ahead and launch my AnyConnect VPN client. Uh, I'm going to hit connect. And now, and typically you, you get an authentication prompt, right, before if you're just doing standalone uh, AnyConnect authentication. But in this case, um, the AnyConnect client, uh, especially on the head end, has been configured to initiate the user's um, default OS browser for authentication. In the, that's the pop-up via the browser instead of the embedded AnyConnect browser from before. 
So we're using an external browser. However, this external browser in the, on the desktop happens to uh, already authenticated to Duo earlier. So there is a token that I received. There is a, um, it's going to initiate, it'll be able to use the single sign-on service with that token. So that means that token um, that was cached in the browser will now be passed on to the Firepower appliance for authentication. And the Firepower appliance, in this case, again, it's connected via SAML to the Duo Cloud for authentication, um, sends the access request, and then the Duo Cloud responds back to the um, Firepower appliance saying, yep, that user token you just sent me um, is valid because that user just authenticated successfully earlier. And here is a response back to you and go ahead and grant the user access. And now the Firepower appliance um, sends, uh, passes that token back to the user browser and any connect at the same time will see the uh, uh, access accept uh, authorization back from Duo Cloud and let the user through. Okay, so it's really no authentication at all, just passes right through uh, for VPN. So let me next uh, show you the demo here. All right, let me start by showing you uh, the first step in the authentication proxy here. So I'm going to launch my browser, and I'm going to log into a, a, a just the, the Duo portal, really, that's being protected by um, the Duo application itself, or the Duo single sign-on service. So you can see here, the, this is the username I was telling you about. Um, that gets captured in the browser, and that can get sent up to Duo for authentication. And in this case, I am using Windows for Hello. I'm not typing in any passwords, just Windows Hello. And you can see here that Windows Hello authenticated me because it checked my uh, my face here, and then it authorized me uh, to get access to the just the Duo portal here that's being protected by the Duo single sign-on service or passwordless as well here. So now uh, I've uh, successfully authenticated. I have the token um, by the Duo single sign-on service or a portal. Now I'm gonna get access or try accessing another application like this Meraki application that's also being protected um, by the Duo single sign-on service. So and this is again, uh, SAML that's being uh, configured to, for this Meraki application, okay? So as I click on the Meraki application, I'm trying to get access to the Meraki portal, and you see here there's no username, no password. It just signed me right through single sign-on service, and it landed me in the Meraki admin portal um, that I can see my, uh, my setup here. So that's perfect. Now I'm going to launch my VPN service. So I'm gonna bring up my AnyConnect client that's gonna to connect to my Irvine lab here. So I'm gonna hit connect. And you'll see here when I hit connect, um, it will pop up a browser. It's not going to use the default any connect browser. It'll pop up a browser for the authentication portion of it. But in this case, since I already have the token assigned by authorized by Duo earlier, you can see that no authentication ever happened. It just passed right through. It says you have been successfully authenticated, and now you may close this browser. And my any connect you can see here in the background. Um, it connected. That's it. There's no username, no password, and I'm running AnyConnect version 4.10, uh, 5085. That was published at the beginning of March here, 2022. Um, and then the VPN statistic, as you can see here, that uh, you know this is the normal VPN policies. I'm doing split tunneling, so really nothing out of the ordinary. It's just VPN, with just with no authentication because it leveraged the Duo uh, single sign-on. A service with passwordless combined so there's no passwords to ever typed okay all right so what I'm going to show you next is um, the configuration behind behind all of this how does it work so uh, let's take a look here all right here we are so let's take a look at what needs to happen here so um, remember the diagram I showed earlier about a duo uh, portal so you need to first of all uh, install the authentication proxy in your environment for for duo cloud to talk to your domain controller active directory domain controller and if you go to duo.com slash docs uh, auth proxy dash reference or you can search for authentication proxy it'll actually take you to uh, this page 
with all the setup information you'll need. And this supports, you know, very good documentation and it supports Windows or Linux. So you just need the authentication proxy. And I, you know, I won't go through the details right now, but you can read this on your own, how to install an authentication proxy. And I did it in my lab for a, a Windows. Uh, I just put it on a Windows machine or actually a Windows, a server, a 2016 server that's joined to the domain. Okay. Now, um, at the same time, we need to look at, uh, let's see, let's look at my, there we go. Let's go to my duo central, uh, how things work. So it, within your duo account, you need to set up a domain controller, uh, or configuration to talk to your active directory domain controller. So here you can see here underneath my single sign on, uh, duo central, uh, for single sign on here. I have a domain controller added as an authentication proxy. So this is in the cloud and you can see here right now it is connected to duo, um, in the cloud here. And then this is just the name of my domain controller, my private IP address in the lab. That's my DN a connection. This is all default. And then, um, you'll have to enter a permitted email domain as is stated here for security reasons of permit email domains, ensure that users log into the correct single sign on account, limiting accidental exposure of credentials. So basically just says that if your users are coming in using these set of credentials for these domains, um, you allow this, they have to come in using this from this domain, right? So that, uh, you can allow this, but so you don't have people coming in from all different domains, trying to spam you and trying to attack you. So you limit the domain that can enter uh, do single sign on. Okay. To talk to your domain controller. So you go through this process and then uh, really pretty simple at the end of it. Uh, if it all works, if I run the test here, now my active directory is configured correctly. All right. Perfect. Now, uh, so this is now cloud talking to through the auth proxy and to my domain controller. And then we have to set up some applications. So for example, I have two applications configured. I have one that, which is a Meraki. I have a Meraki portal, uh, admin portal. Um, it's able to do SAML authentication to the duo cloud, duo single sign on server. So I have that configured. And then uh, I also have uh, another application that I'm protecting here. So if I, if you take a look at this, uh, this is, you know, in duo configuration, this is the application um, for FTD and I just call it for password list. And this is the duo stuff that you, metadata that you normally configure. Then you have certificates down here, um, that you, you'll need to download. And this is my base URL, my connection profile that I installed in FTD. I keep scrolling down and then I created a policy for an employee and my policy, my user, Jerry, I belong to the employee group and I have uh, remember devices actually, uh, let's see here. We'll edit this, uh, require enroll. This is all pretty much, um, default. And I simply make sure that I had a remember devices. This is the single sign on piece um, for all web applications to have that. Uh, configured. Okay. And, um, that's pretty much it here. So if we go back to, yes, now we need to go back to firepower. So let me log back into my firepower there. And you can see here in my firepower, uh, cause I have to configure a connection profile, but, um, you need to configure a, sing a SAML single sign on server underneath the AAA single sign on. And I have one created here called duo password list. And you can see here, if I edit this, uh, that's the name. And this is the metadata that I got from the duo admin portal. I just showed you earlier. So in the duo admin portal, where did it go? Here we go. Oop. Yep. For the application, this one for FTD. And this is the metadata that you copy here into uh, firepower there. And then this is my. Uh, base URL, Irvine DMZ 1120 FTD Cisco.com. And then, uh, this is a certificate that I imported from the duo right here. Uh, I, uh, identity provider certificate. I imported that into here 
And then uh, don't forget to uncheck this by default, the request IDP reauthenticate login is checked. So I just unchecked it because I want single sign on to pass through when I go from one application to another, right? I don't want to prompt for a reauthentication. So I uncheck this. Okay. Now, after this is done, then I simply go into my RVPN and you can see here on my RVPN policy, I have one called passwordless and that's my IP address range. It's just, just a typical VPN profile. And here's my authentication to SAML. And this is the authentication server. This is the one, the single sign on the one I just configured. I just showed you there. Uh, the default, you want to enable default OS browser because the VPN user is being prompted for authentication through the default OS browser, not the embedded AnyConnect browser, right? Because that's, uh, that's a private session there. So this is using the browser because we're doing single sign-on from uh, using web single sign-on experience there, passing from one browser session to another. And then the rest down here, accounting and authorization doesn't really matter because we're not using that. I just have a default to radius, but this is the key here to have this configured. And then um, see the alias, this is the normal configuration. Uh, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this uh, makes sense to you and give it a try and let me know if you uh, have any issues with this and uh, um, be curious to get some feedback from you guys. All right, thanks.